In 2009, 1.7 million people died from tuberculosis, a contagious bacterial disease that usually affects the lungs. It is estimated that one-third of the world is currently infected with TB. Of those infected, 5 to 10 percent will become sick or infectious at some point during their life. For women, TB is particularly dangerous. Currently, it is the third leading cause of death in adult women. While studies show women are more likely to complete a full treatment cycle, they are also more likely to receive a late diagnosis. This late diagnosis poses a severe health risk, making TB more difficult to treat. For pregnant women with TB, a later diagnosis makes them four times as likely to die in childbirth. So why are women getting treated later? Research suggests that in addition to access and awareness issues, one of the main reasons for this delay is a fear of the stigma attached to TB. A study conducted in India showed that while men were primarily concerned with potential income loss, women were afraid of being divorced or of losing social status if they were diagnosed. Unfortunately, this fear is far from unfounded. Each year, 100,000 Indian women are abandoned by their husbands due to TB, becoming essentially homeless. After a diagnosis, women are often harassed by in-laws and shunned by the community. For unmarried women, being diagnosed with TB affects future marriage prospects, making families more wary about seeking help for their daughters. One study in Zambia found that 60% of the individuals surveyed would not marry someone who had previously had TB. This social stigma makes it more difficult for women to seek treatment affecting their health and the health of those around them. According to the World Health Organization, a patient, if left untreated, can infect 10 to 15 people in his or her close environment per year. With such high rates of infection, it is necessary to find a way to improve the treatment and diagnosis of TB in women. Many organizations currently work to improve physical access to treatment, trying to reduce the geographic and economic barriers individuals face. These vital interventions seek to address the root of the problem. If there are no clinics or qualified health practitioners nearby, or if individuals are unable to afford the health treatment, then they will not be able to get the help they need. However, more recently, nonprofits have also tried to develop ways to reduce the stigma surrounding TB, recognizing that stigma is a large part of the problem. If individuals are afraid of being rejected by their community, then they may not visit the clinics until it is too late. Education is one way organizations are empowering individuals to take control of their health. By reducing the misconceptions surrounding TB, it may be possible to also reduce the stigma and increase the number of individuals who seek treatment. As one study notes, large-scale community workshops may miss women entirely, suggesting the need for a more focused program. Through the use of female community health workers, organizations are able to ensure that information about TB reaches women directly. In Bangladesh, for example, women community health workers visit each household, providing information about TB in a context women are able to relate to. Pakistan has also instituted a similar program. Trained lady health workers are able to visit households to identify those who may need treatment and are able to reduce the number of individuals who are unable to access the necessary medicines. In addition, Pakistan has also attempted to reach the community through an anti-stigma campaign. By airing talk shows and dramas that detail the symptoms of TB and encourage women to seek help, Pakistan is hoping to increase community and family support for women with TB. Empirical evidence for the successes of these methods in reducing stigma is inconclusive, although they have managed to increase the number of individuals who receive treatment. Current literature suggests that the most promising approach to reducing stigma might be to provide individuals who have TB with a social support system. For example, some organizations have advocated the use of TB clubs, or a gathering of 3 to 10 people with TB. TB clubs meet weekly to provide support, provide transportation to clinics, and to encourage the completion of their treatment cycle. In addition, they encourage TB screening among at-risk community members. In Africa, these groups have been able to reduce negative attitudes and practices concerning TB in the wider community and have also managed to empower individuals so they feel less affected by the stigma. In Pakistan, researchers have found that by including counseling along with the treatment, women become more likely to complete the treatment cycle and feel an increased sense of self-efficacy. With the introduction of new treatments and interventions such as these, women have been getting a chance to actively work towards a healthier future. However, until the stigma and other factors driving the disease are eradicated, TB will continue to be a heavy burden for women.